Okay, my name's Pat Furr, and I'm the founder of Computers for Classrooms, which is a nonprofit computer refurbisher, and we've been in business now 23 years. Started in 1991 in my house. So um, at the present time, we have a 25,000 square foot warehouse. The interesting thing about our program is that it's self-sustaining. We do not uh, ask for grants or have fundraisers. So that is one of the real keys. How can you do a self-sustaining program without raising money or having fundraisers? And we do it providing more service and doing it better than maybe even some professional places that charge for their services. We do ours for free in return for getting better quality donations. Now we have two main streams of donations coming in. Uh, at this door we have people from the community coming in wishing to donate computers, televisions, and so forth. It's brought in here, or our carts go out and unload their vehicles. They are stacked in this area to be processed. We have things such as wire, inkjet printers, computers, monitors, um, and other assorted things. So we accumulate them here till we have a full pallet load, and then they are weighed, counted, and then sent for processing. At our next location over here, we have a 26-foot box van with a lift gate, and we travel all over Northern California picking up donations. So anything coming in our box van, it, we bring it over here, we weigh it, we count it. All that we take in has to be accounted for, taking in and leaving. We're an R2 certified recycler. We get audited every year, so the things we do have to be done well and done properly, and that means accounting for everything that comes in and going out. Uh, the aisleway here is somewhat full. This is the incoming that we have our volunteers process. We first test it to see if it is something that could be reused. For most schools now, we're looking for core two duo computers or higher. This level changes from time to time. But for the common core programs, that's the basic they're looking for now is core two or higher. But the ones that are less than that are still have good remaining life. And we work then with low-income families. Uh, in rural Northern California, there is a huge amount of people that don't have access to technology. So this is still excellent equipment. The, the, the um, computers that we're not using right now, they go into our volunteer area, and the volunteers come in and take them apart. They get job training, they learn about hands-on, they learn about a lot of things about computers. They remove the hard drives because every hard drive has to be wiped thoroughly or degaussed, destroyed. No hard drive comes into our facility. Uh, we do not turn the computer on with a hard drive in it. It gets wiped or destroyed ahead of time. I don't want to see if there are bad things on a hard drive that I would have to send in to the police. So it's much safer for everybody. Everything is wiped completely or destroyed. Um, and so then it gets sorted once again if it's going to schools or low-income families. materials that you see here have just been brought in. They have not had time to be processed. Uh, it comes from one of the state agencies. The, the ones up above, those have all been processed and they're sorted by make and model speed so that if we get an order for a school or a lab or after school program, we can go there immediately and see how many we have of the same make and model. 
So we may send several hundred to another program or another area so we can go out and very quickly tell if we have that in, on hand or what we can do. Right now, the local school, we're sending out uh, 100 a week plus laptops for the schools to replace some of the older ones they have on hand. Um, because we're, um, everything has to be done properly, everything has to be labeled and dated as far as what it is. Inventory and tracking is very important if you're going to run a good uh, facility. Uh, these, air, these are scrap tin, scrap metal. They go out, we get rid of those locally. You don't want to spend a lot of money transporting that. It gets melted down and reused for the metal, and this is also another scrap tin. These are uh, monitors that we send out for recycling. Uh, two different ways, if the screens are good, we're able to resell them. If they're not good, then we send them out for recycling. We have, uh, depending where they're going to go. These are power supplies, and we can actually get make money on the power supplies. Again, if everything's sorted and put in the Gaylords, uh, we're able to sell it, and that helps to support our program for a commodity value. This is called urban mining. You no longer have to go in with heavy equipment and, and uh, dig this out of the earth at the the costs involved, but we are able to instead retrieve it from the amount of recycling things that we have donated. But everything going out gets tested. We have a company or we reuse the laser printers. We don't reuse the inkjet printers because the heads often get clogged or the ink is, it's not worth it because they're very inexpensive. But these laser jet printers are fantastic and they have a very long life and the schools love them. These can be put on a network and um, they're still very usable in the classroom. These are kind of exciting because these are some of our first quad-core computers coming out. Uh, we've had some i5, i-core 5 laptops donated. And the schools are really thrilled because they can use higher-end equipment, handling more RAM, and put it in CAD classes, graphics classes, video editing. Schools get to do a lot of really interesting things. Uh, two of our high schools now have 3D printers. So this is what kids need. They need something that's exciting. We saw the girl today that we had met, and she's in a robotics class in her high school. So that's pretty exciting. This is where we clean all the computers. Everything has to be cleaned inside and out before it's released. We do a lot of laptops for the Department of Rehab, State of California. Uh, they were buying new, but instead they found the quality of our laptops to be really excellent and they buy them from us. So instead of paying brand new for several hundred dollars, they get them from us for 250 And they've been really happy with them. And we give one to two day service that they have them delivered. Pretty good. These are boxes of hard drives. These have all been wiped and tested. On the hard drives, we first run Smart Drive. It's a program that tells if the hard drive is good, uh, if it um, makes sure it doesn't have any physical damage or any damage in the sectors. Uh, if it does, we go ahead and destroy it. And because we use a program called Blanco, and we pay for every hard drive that we wipe. So if the hard drive is too small, below what we're using now, or if it has problems, then we go ahead and destroy it. Um, but these are 
sometimes when we get large donations from government agencies, some of them like to pull the hard drives all together and we get them without. It doesn't bother us because we have thousands of hard drives all set and ready to put in. So if they feel more comfortable getting rid of the hard drive uh, at their facility, that's fine. But we get the good equipment that we can put in schools and with families that really need it. We have a Macintosh program, uh, so we, some of the schools still use Macintosh products, and so we have a Macintosh expert that handles that. It's a, a separate uh, program. Uh, our Mac person has his own office, and if he starts talking too much about how great Macs are, we close the door. <laughs> This room is the final stop for the computers going out. Uh, we load the software programs, we activate them, we test them completely before they go out. You have to have a very high quality product, especially in used equipment. If they think it's just a shoddy piece of used equipment, you'd be out of business in a hurry. If you really test and do a... Is somebody here? Leroy, still up. Oh, okay, right. Uh, so this is where we do it. We have some great tables here. They're all wired with uh, network equipment. So everything's tested, updated, and labeled before it leaves here for cleaning. is the room that we use to wipe the hard drives. We have a program over here I can show you uh, where we use Blanco's server. And Blanco wipes the hard drives, but it gives us a really excellent report that is saved in an HTML file that can be used in court as proof that the hard drive has been wiped. And it shows by the date um, and how it was wiped, method that was used, and the serial number. So we work with hospitals, we work with IRS, Department of Health Services, many agencies that have very uh, key equipment. I think all of these are off right now. Yeah, there's nothing on them. Okay, we use SATA to draw uh, in order to wipe because SATA is much faster than IDE. So even if you have IDE drives, we have SATA to IDE connectors that we put on here, so wiping is much faster. We have servers that we have outside where you can wipe a RAID server using this and it will show each hard drive in the RAID array as a separate drive. Normally they lump them all together. But this will show each drive and make sure each drive has wiped completely. If the hard drive is too small or doesn't wipe, or if it has bad sectors, bad sectors means the drive may not be dead now but it's getting ready to fail. We don't want to take any chance. We we have a zero tolerance for bad sectors. Anything with bad sectors comes over to this station. This is a degausser. And this is an older drive. But these disks, all the data is stored on these in magnetic format, like the old magnetic tape drives, but it's still magnetic data. So a degausser is, puts out a magnetic burst of energy that is strong enough to pe penetrate the cast iron case and circuit board, wipe all the data off of all the disks, but then it also magnetizes the hard drive so it can no longer be used. Now, the real advantage of using this method is that it is 
the least damaging to the environment or the employee using it. They cause, if you're using a shredder, you are throwing particulate matter up in the air, unless you have a really good way of containing it. One of the other recyclers has a video, I don't know if he still uses it, but Josie's employees standing here tossing the hard drives up into a shredder. No face masks, no guard, no breathing apparatus. And it gives me the chills every time I watch it because it's very hazardous. He's putting bits of metal dust out in the air and he has an employee completely unprotected. They tell me that even if you have a pacemaker, this is so well shielded that there's no problem. I haven't tried it with anyone yet. Any, oh, okay. <laughs> but um, we can do 200 hard drives an hour very fast. State agencies in California, ha before they can send computers off their property, have to guarantee the hard drive has been wiped or destroyed. Well, most agencies, or many, don't have the ability to wipe, or the technical ability, or time. So we did a test just this last month. We took our degausser to one of the state agencies. Within an hour, we had degaussed all their hard drives. It would have taken their employees 20 hours to process them. So we're saving them money. And as I say, I don't care if we degauss them. Uh, we're willing to do a beta test with our Blanco software and a, and a flash drive to go to their facility because they have to wipe it on their premises. But too much now, department managers are afraid the data will get out. They're being frightened by some of the recyclers. You don't want to take the chance that anything, any of your data is coming out because you're personally responsible. They scare them into sending everything out to recycling. But what we can offer, we can do it on site, and we also do an audit of their hard drives. Now, we have a handheld barcode scanner, and we can scan the serial number on each drive. We give them a certification of wipe, and we give them a list of all the hard drives by serial number. That's actually, uh, that's proof for an audit trail. If you're just handing these over to Recycler, you're not getting proof for an audit trail. So we think this is a lot better to use a program such as ours. You've got proof in hand that it's been done. And all of this can go to schools or other people that need it. I think at this point it's criminal to send like core two dual computers out for recycling and the commodity value when it, they desperately need them. close the door. Uh, one other place that might be of interest is our hard drive blow-off room. We have a, a filtration system that vents through the roof and the fan that goes all the time so that we put the computer here, we have an air compressor built into the wall, we blow out the computer, and then we have a vacuum to vacuum up the dust. Um, our new place we're gonna we're gonna be moving soon and we're gonna build a hooded element so we could put the computer inside, blow it off, and have the fan suck underneath rather than a separate room. So you can't use a vacuum in a computer generally. But dust is one of the biggest problems that uh, can, can harm computers. Um, this room in our facility is where our volunteers come. Uh, we do the training. They don't have to have prior training. They have to have closed-toed shoes because, or else if they're wearing sandals, bring something to take their toes home with. Um, so we do train them on what they're doing in this area. Some of the more experienced technicians diagnose the computers that are coming in for reuse. 
especially those that are core two or quad core computers, the higher end ones, they handle. The lower end ones come in on pallets, the volunteers take them from the pallet and disassemble them. So the plastics go in one tub, the metal cases in another, the wire, the batteries off the motherboard, memory, CPUs, heat sinks, optical drives, they all get separated uh, we have certain ones that we are using. The others, if we have excess, go out for recycling. Like SATA optical drives are still in supply, short supply, so all those get reused, whereas the IDEs we have plenty on hand. Um, we get people, college classes come over here as part of the curriculum. They spend so many volunteer hours with us. When I was in the master's program in computer science at Chico State, we never once opened a computer. And it's my opinion that if you, your family is sending you to college to study computers, you ought to be able to know how to fix theirs when you come home or know something about it. Um, we have disabled people. The minimum age is 13. There is no upper age, and we have a very eclectic group that comes. We have ROP classes. As part of the high school classes come here, we have three or four of those groups that come every week. We have behavioral health. Uh, we have individuals, all different kinds that come because we allow them to work as volunteers for 50 hours and they get a free computer. This is the um, sign-in book. Everybody that comes to volunteer has their own sheet in our, in our sign-in book. So these are all the active volunteers and they keep track of their hours and when they hit 50 hours then they get a free computer. So we have even some that go back several years. We keep them on hand and we let them continue to add more hours uh, even though they haven't been here in a couple years. When you have a uh, computer that you're taking apart, you have to remove the lithium batteries, the little round button batteries. They must go on this tape and then stored in a box with cardboard between the layers because these can create a fire hazard. They're, if the positive and negative sides come together, they can create a fire. So there are very strict label um, rules and regulations about batteries and motherboards and uh, anything containing mercury. This is the memory that we have pulled from them. We go through to sort and see if this is anything we're still using or if it's too old, this can be sold. These are the processors coming out of there. Now, these are some of the older ones and they have more value than some of the newer processors. This is a really old one. And it has more, um, it's worth more money because of the gold content. These have gold. So the older processors are more valuable than the newer ones. Uh, we put the graphics cards here because this is something we reuse a lot of. These are higher DVI cards, and so we use these and um, upgrade the video and computers. Um, so all of these are parts that we can reuse or resell to help support our program. In this area, we have um, the public comes in low income. They have to qualify to come in the door to either buy a computer or to have one repaired. We do a lot of repairs. We do both laptops and desktops. and. Um, we're able to really help people. Some have been given a computer and maybe some little things wrong with it. We've had some of them go out to other computer shops and they told them it wasn't any good. They brought it over here and we were able to fix it. I had one of the shops call me recently and ask, gee, how'd you fix it? Which I thought was really good that they called to find out how we did it. And we said, well, we pretty much opened it up, cleaned it, 
put it back together is probably had a loose connection and it worked fine. But they charged him $40 and told him it wasn't any good. So the person said, can I get my money back? <laughs> <laughs> um, and then in this area, we demonstrate the computers that we have. Right now, we have um, computers going from $200 down to $50. That's a complete system. It's got Microsoft Windows 7 Professional. It's got Microsoft Office 2010 Home and Business. Um, we have some dual cores that we sell. We go to schools and have a very special price and so forth of $85. Complete systems guaranteed for a year. So we're able to get technology in the hands of people that couldn't afford it. We work with uh, Comcast because they have a program with the internet for kids and free or reduced lunch for just $9.95 a month. For five megabit download speed. And that's as good, it will never go up as long as you have a child and free or reduced lunch program. So we're really trying to get technology out to as many people as can have it.